Stumpo has been building houses and shattering stereotypes. Big stuff, big problem. I get eyes all around my head. I'm not going to miss a trick. Yep. You have to love this business all the time. Cindy Stumpo is tough as nails. And welcome back to Cindy Stumpo is tough as nails on WBZ 1030. And by my side is with me my gorgeous daughter, Samantha from Newbrook Realty. How you doing, honey? Hi, Mom. How are you? I'm doing great. Who do we have here with us today? Well, first of all, I want to talk about why we have these people here today. Did you see my social media blow up the way it did last week? I did. Am I going to be able to get a word in here? Okay. My last week's social media blew up like I could not believe people sending me private messages on how we hit some bulletin points about uh, stigmas and vocational schools Uh, alternative education against regular education. It was just all over the place. So I thought it'd be really cool if we bring two students in and hear out of their own words what they have to say about how they're being educated in a vocational tech career-based type school, a little bit unconventional than what most students are used to. And they're in the studio. And I would like to introduce them. Samantha, could you please introduce? Well, hi, guys. We're in the studio with... George and Erica and Michael. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves as well and say hi to our audience? Hi, I'm George Clement. I'm the assistant principal at Minuteman Technical High School in Lexington, Mass. Hi, I'm Erica. I'm a junior in electrical wiring at Minuteman. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a junior in carpentry at Minuteman. Yeah, and Michael, a few minutes ago, Michael and I were just talking really fast, and I said, so um, I'm like, you know, I'm getting older out there. I'm one, he said, well, I, actually, let me go back. He said, I said to him, George, I said to Michael, there's a skill gap going on right now in this country. And Michael was standing back and he's listening. And I said, right now there are 5.6 million available jobs and 75% of them do not need or don't require a four-year degree. Two years ago, George, there were 2.8 million jobs. And that number has doubled in in, in the last two to five years. So in the next two to five years, I think that number is going to grow to 11.2 million based on the skills gap that exists today. Am I correct on that? You you are correct. Or oh, was know. I off on something? No, that, those those numbers are valid. They, they, we talked before about that being the silver tsunami of all the baby boomers that are retiring out of out of the trades, and there's nobody coming up the pipeline to replace them. Okay, so then we have Michael here in the studio. He's awfully cute, by the way, and. He said this. He said, yeah, he goes, you know why that problem is? And I said, no, Michael, tell me. He said, well, everybody's retiring. Like, my boss is retiring. And I said, well, how old's your boss? He said, oh, he's old. He's 53. I said to Michael, Michael, you've got to leave my studio right now, okay? Because, like, I'm 53 and that's not old. Michael? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay? I won't take it personally. Okay, so yeah. if I throw you out of my studio, it's okay? <laughs> okay, I like this kid. I mean, but, but if you guys don't retire, what's going to happen to us? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. see, the problem is when you're... How old are you, Mike? I'm 16. Okay, so it's 16, Mike, Michael. And by the way, I changed names around here, okay? I've been doing that since a little girl. Um, Michael thinks 53 is old, okay? So, Michael... Don't ever call me old again, okay? <laughs> or I might come across this desk and we're in bed of big trouble. But so anyways, to get back, we want to keep this show about cool kids and cool jobs because I think that's what construction is. I think we have so many cool jobs, and I think with the new kids coming up, they're going to be really cool kids doing cool jobs. I love that. Cool kids, cool jobs. So I want to hear um, Erica and Michael talk about what it's like a minute man, George, and you can help guide them a bit, you know what I mean? Um, Because I get nervous behind this stupid mic, and I can only imagine they might get nervous behind here. I just do, you know, I want to bring up some valid points. We talked about, again, the skill gap, okay? We talked about how many jobs are available, and by the way, these kids are going to be sitting in really great positions five years from now, six years from now, or even sooner, but as they grow... And I also want to discuss, George, so please keep a note on this, on the higher education. Okay, so we have the higher education over here, and we have the alternative education over there. And I want to touch upon that, too. So if you can, you know, keep that in in the back of your brain or write it down. So that and the huge skill gap and listening to these two kids. So you guys, why don't we start with you, Michael, here. I'm going to try to make it more relaxed here. Okay. Tell me how you decided to go to Minuteman what made you decide to say hey okay well when I was in middle school Minuteman came to my 
middle school and presented themselves. I was like, oh, this is cool. And after they were done presenting, they are like, you can come to our school and shadow. And shadowing is when you pick a shop and follow one kid around for a day just to see what they're doing. I get, I, we all understand yeah. shadowing. We've all done that, but go ahead. Okay, and you can do that more than multiple times, and that was the first step to it. And then I came to career day and went through all the shops for about an hour and got some examples of what they did. And then I went to open house with my parents so they could see what we did as well. So, again, because unfortunately we only have so much time in our program, but and I want to try to hit about everything we possibly can. Right. When you decided that you want to get your parents involved, that's was you were going there. Yeah. Were your parents on board with this right from right outside the box when you came to well, them and said, "Hey, I was in this, you know, showcase well, of a." Okay. Well. My mom just let me choose whatever I wanted to do. She didn't want to force me to go anywhere. So when I brought it up, she's like, yeah, I'll go with you, see how it is and everything. But it's your education. You do what you want. And that's how I just went in a minute. And, and, and she trusted you. Yep. And she trusted that you knew what you wanted. She did. Which yeah. is really, really cool. Erica, real fast, honey, give me your side. How did it happen for you? So the school, Miniman came to my school in Arlington and presented themselves to us explaining what they do, how the school works, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So then I went home to my parents and I explained to them and they were like, well, we were going to actually introduce the school to you and see if that's a great path for you. And I thought it was cool how we both kind of had like the same idea. And then we looked further into the school, went to Shadow. and We do a lot of shadowing right now, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that word, shadowing. Go ahead. And I absolutely loved it. Why don't you guys talk a little bit about uh, some of the some of your peer reactions when other kids yeah, found out well, you were coming? Yeah, I was going to get there. So basically, I was trying to reel this in that both their parents were right on board. Yeah, and that's yes. that's like the best because once your parents are there, you've got that comfort level of like, okay, mom and dad, or mom. Some people have just moms. Some people have just dads. Some people have moms and dads. Whatever, my family's getting behind me on this. So that all worked out great for you too. Now, what about the stigma of, because you're another generation, you know? The stigma was huge for me. If I said I was going to go to a voc vocational school, you know, people might have said, oh, she's a dum-dum, and, you know, she's going to vocational school. By the way, I was the dum-dum in high school, but we won't even go there. But mine was all anxiety-driven. Um, how about the peer pressure from your friends? Well, all of my friends thought that it was, like, a joke that I wanted to go to a tech school or, like, I'm not going to go anywhere in life going there. Okay, you hold that thought for one minute. We're going to break out to a commercial. We'll be back with Samantha Stampo and George Clement, Vice Principal of Minuteman Career and Technical School, and Erica and Michael, who are both students at Minuteman Career and Technical High School. I'm Cindy Stampo, and this is Tough as Nails on WBZ 1030 News Radio. Sponsored by National Lumber, you'll see the difference. Eversource, saving through energy efficiency. And Village Bank, your village, your bank. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Stumpo. You're listening to Tough as Nails on WBC News Radio 1030. We are talking about cool kids and cool jobs. And we're here in the studio, of course, with my beautiful daughter, Samantha, and George Clement, Vice Principal of Minuteman Career and Technical School, and Erica and Michael, who are both students at Minuteman Career and Technical High School. With that being said, we just left off with Erica explaining to me about the peer pressure, or if there wasn't any peer pressure, when you decide to go to a vocational school. Yeah, so my friends thought that it was kind of like a joke that I wanted to go and that I wasn't gonna go anywhere in life and that um, I'm just trying to take the easy way out by going to this kind of school, which I feel is not true at all. I've come to this school and I've loved every day. Every so let me take you back from it. So that your friends actually kind of poo-pooed on it. They yeah, really absolutely. crapped on it. Yeah, they didn't want to be my friend anymore. Oh, that's nice people, huh? Nice kids. <laughs> But you still didn't fall to peer pressure. No. And right there should tell you that I'm a strong girl. Because 
the biggest, the hardest part about being a teenager, never mind trying to figure out what you want to do with your future of your life in your 20s and your 30s, is just getting through the peer pressure of being a teenager. That's so hard in itself. So when you look in the mirror and you go, I don't care what my friends say. That's right there, the coolest kid I know. Because to be honest, that was me. I didn't care what people really said. I was going to do what I wanted to do anyways. You think when I became a builder 30 years ago, guys, girls, men, they made fun of me. Yeah. Ask me if I care. I don't care. So you got that peer pressure mm-hmm. and you changed your whole group of friends. Absolutely, yeah. And said, bye-bye. And I'm going off to this world. Yes. And how could anybody ev- ever even think that learning skills of what you guys are learning is easy? It's I'm out here 30 years and I'm still learning every day. Yeah. So this isn't easy to learn a little bit of this, a little bit of that, whether it's HVAC, plumbing, carpentry, framing, electrical, audio. Uh, th- there's so much that goes into it. But meanwhile, people need homes to live in. So without people like us, they won't have homes to live in. Exactly. Okay. So you took that peer pressure and you just pushed it out the door and you said, I'm Erica and this is what I'm going to do. Yes. And I don't care about these kids. Exactly. And off you went. You started your first day of school and it was what? It was overwhelming, obviously, first day of high school and um, exciting. I started soccer and that's where I met all of my friends. Oh, so you play sports at Mimi too? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's something I didn't know. So <laughs> sports, let's get that out there. Yeah, soccer. I play soccer and tennis. And cool. me and my friends, there's no way that we're ever going to stop being friends. These are your lifelong friends yes. now. It's a, it's a different bond of a friendship. Absolutely. Do you kind of find them like more of a family of a oh, friendship yeah. than They're what you had? So supportive of everything. They're so happy, like, happy that I found what I want to do. And I'm happy that they found what they want to do. And it's awesome. And, and, and folks, I need everybody to understand, I'm sitting in the studio with really two good-looking teenagers, okay? <laughs> and they're handsome, and she's beautiful, and she's got a smile that, that, that just lights up the room. And they're going after their dreams, and they have figured out their dreams at a very young age. Was conventional school for you, Erica, a little tougher on you? sitting in a classroom or yeah I need to work with my hands I can't just sit and read from a textbook all day just to not know what I want to do in life okay and and I get that so you're better I am too that's why I'm better on a job working I learn from doing from watching from listening put a book in front of me and I just want to run and my feet are swinging and I just want to get out of the classroom and that's how I was and guess what I'm here it's 30 30 years (laughs) later And I'm a pretty successful person. So, you know, but your story is is really compelling and it's really cool. Michael, talk to me. What kind of peer pressure did you take? So I had a small group of friends when I was in middle school. Yep. And I got mostly the same deal. They were like, don't go. Just come to the regular high school with us. But I didn't want to. It's my education. I wanted to do what I wanted to do, even if I had to stop talking to them. But, but did you stay talking with your friends? Were they Because girls can be different than boys. Right. Sometimes I talk to them, but not really. Most of the time I just see them walking around town and stuff. But that's Do, about it. You know, it's funny. I loved. I, I wish we had a crystal ball because this would be the fun part. To fast forward 10 years from now yeah. when you're all 24, 25 and see who really is happy and who's loving what they do and who's succeeding on what they're doing. Like I said, you guys are in here with these bright smiles on your faces, and I gotta be honest, when I was in, your, in junior high school, I didn't have a bright smile on my face, you know? Um, and I think that people think that people that go, that kids that go through or go to, right, Sammy, vocational schools, yeah. have learning disabilities. Or, like you said, Erica, take the easy way out. That, that's so not true. And we wanna get rid of the stigma of that vocational schools are for what, George? Dummies? Yeah, those kids is what I usually do. Those hear. troubled kids. Mm-hmm. Actually, let, let's go back there. When I was going to high school, it was for troubled kids. Oh, and by the way, George, what I didn't know till I started to do some more homework on this is most vocational schools have been taken out of high schools. That's I didn't right. know that. Yeah. yeah. When I went to Newton South, we had a vocational department. But I think that was more like the mechanic. I, don't, I didn't know that they were doing uh, woodworking in there. 
I, so I became a builder, and the Newton school systems were calling me for extra wood. Would I donate it? And then I realized <laughs> there was carpentry in those schools. Right. Sammy, did you have carpentry and vocational by the time you went to South? It was a bunch of art classes and music and photo classes. There wasn't even home ec when I was in high school. So they had already got rid of the vocational mm-hmm. school out of, out of the high school. So I didn't even know that. Yeah, there's actually a trend now. The commissioner wants, they're calling it an innovation pathway to try to get more things back in into the, the high, school. high school. Right, because they realize they made a mistake. Right, and I and uh, there's a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of celebrities out there pushing to get it back in. I was just uh, watching uh, Mike from Dirty Jobs. You ever watched that reality show? Mm-hmm. Pretty cool dude. And he's fighting really hard to get vocational back into uh, the schools. So for you, Michael, it was... You just move forward and yeah. start to make new friends. And you're now how many years there? Three. This is my third year. And at you. Man. Here's the big question. When you get up every morning, and either one of you can answer this, do you love going to school? Yeah. I love going to school. I love going. I love Minuteman. You love going there? Yeah. Michael. So you're not feeling that angst and anxiety of being in a traditional classroom. You are in traditional classrooms, don't get me wrong. But something tells me the pressure of the teachers handle their students differently than a traditional school. Am I right or am I wrong? And I could be wrong, I don't know. I think that's right. Like our teachers push us because we have to get double the academics and the same amount of time as a traditional high school, but they're understanding that we're only there every other week and they help us when we need help. And are there for us and there's no anxiety or you do have anxiety going to the school too yeah I mean normal anxiety normal anxiety like essays and projects and everything but the teachers are great <laughs> like Erica if I had to ask you this question what is your what is, what is your pretty much your major in um, Minuteman what, what, what is your what is your trade that you really want to go after electrical wiring so you want to be an electrician yes that is really cool so cool and by the way, I just gave her one of the C Stumper bracelets. It looks really cool on her wrist, by the way. <laughs> so you want to do electrical? I do. You want to be out there with a tool belt? Yes. Out on job sites doing electrical work? Yes. Sammy, she's too pretty. To <laughs> she's going to get hit on all the time. That's not fair to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm not playing. But that, you know what? The truth is that's what they did to me. What do I hear every day? You don't look like a builder. You don't look like a builder. What's a builder supposed to look like? It's true. So you're going to be the pretty electrician. I like it. Um, and Michael, what are you, what's your major? Probably general contracting. That's my, that's my game. So you want to be a GC on a job, you want to run jobs? want to run jobs, work on them, direct people, yeah. Cool. Really, really cool. Okay, so we're here with Mike and Erica, and we will be back to talk more with our cool kids who have cool jobs. More with Erica and Michael from Minuteman Tech High School after this short break. Sponsored by Pella Windows of Woburn. There's always a convenient way to let Pella into your home. And Gardner Mattress, Salem Newton in Woburn. Good old-fashioned quality. Cindy Stumpo, you're listening to Tough as Nails on WBZ News Radio 1030. We're talking about cool kids and cool jobs. And by the way, the music is really cool too tonight. Um, Erica, Michael, we've been talking a lot about just about everything. You know, um, Michael was just saying to me, Cindy, I, you know, I have a question for you. So you said you have a question for me. So shoot it. Yeah, all right. Since I'm already in the doghouse saying people are 50. Old at 53. Yeah, you're in the dark house on that one, yeah, but okay. we'll let that one go. Okay. All right. We'll give you the break that you're 15 on that one. Go ahead. All right, cool. Cool. All right. Um, since I looked you up, and you do multi million dollar houses and only multi million dollar houses, and that's awesome. I think it looks amazing. But we were talking, and I heard that you got a lot of C's in high school. Like, how did you become successful from that? That's a very good question. Okay, so how do I give the Reader's Digest on this one? Good luck. I figured, <laughs> Samantha, good luck. Um, how I got successful was hard work, tenacity, and doing something that I loved every day. So you've got to love what you do every day to be successful, or you're not going to be successful. As far as I'm concerned, that's only my opinion. But when you just said to me, well, you carried C's, 
Yeah, I'm not embarrassed to get out there and say that. I was never an honorable student. I had a brother that was. And by the way, when you come in behind a sibling that is an honorable student and you're not, that's like, oh, God, does he have to be so smart, like seriously, and make me look like a dum-dum. And, but I think looking back now, Michael, it's not that I couldn't have done the work. It was just I was had so much anxiety in those classrooms. A teacher calling out on me to read out loud a teacher calling on me to answer a question. Even if I knew the answer, the minute they said, Cindy, you know, you always have those kids in the classroom that are like, woo I'll answer, you know, 20, you know, there's 20 kids in the classroom and 10 hands go up. My hand wasn't going up, so why are you, why are you looking at me for the answer? Go to those 10 kids that want to give you the answer. But no, back then, teachers go, no, no, I'm going to pick the kid that's not raising the hand. And of course, I was never raising my hand. So I realize now in my life, and I, I realized this the last probably good 25 years of my life and I suffer from anxiety and panic disorder and if you read about me you'll you'll know that but that was my first round of what anxiety felt like I just didn't know how to express it I didn't know how to go home and say to my mom and dad I don't want to be called out in school I don't want to read out loud and back in that generation if I probably did my father probably would said you're going back to school and you're going to read out loud and you're going to follow what the teacher says but I will tell you this I did different by my kids just in case they had the same problem that I had. What she's not telling you is because she was full of anxiety doesn't mean she wasn't tenacious and driven and nothing was going to stop her being successful no matter what it was. And, and that's true. You know, that is absolutely 100% true. Is there was not, I was not going to let anxiety and panic define me ever in my life. And by the way, it had nothing to do with being social in high school or junior high school. Extremely the biggest social butterfly you'll ever meet. You know, and oh, by the way, in elementary school, I had to walk to those down that long hallway where kids that needed extra attention had to go. And I'll never forget this. And real fast, this boy as I was walking said, "Hey, Cindy Leonard, you're going to the dumb room." And I'm like, "This kid just say that to me? Like I'm going to the dumb room? I already knew I was going to the dumb room, whatever that meant. Meaning I needed the extra help in junior high school. But he said it. And he pissed me off so bad. I literally right hooked him." I go, <laughs> I, I got thrown out of school for two days, but it's okay. My mom and dad didn't punish me because he shouldn't have ever said that to me. He didn't get in trouble for saying that to me, but I got in pro. But he was a year older than me, and I right hooked him, and that was like the best feeling in the world. And I know I am not pushing violence by people, people by no means, no violence, but it was just my first reaction to do that because you called me a name that I didn't like. I'm not dumb. I just need the extra help, and now. Everybody else laughing behind me, so how dumb am I, right? Like, think about it. The best form, what's the saying that Ray says? The best, best form of flattery? No. Uh, the best form of revenge is living a good life. And I live a great life, and I have great kids and, and good family support. So that answers that question, I hope. And for... Um, so we have a caller on the line. She does want to rename anonymous, but are you still there, ma'am? Hello. Hi. Hi, guys. Is this Cindy? This is Cindy. Hi. You are so dope and inspirational. I'm so glad I get to talk to you. I heard about your show from my I'm, friends, and I'm sitting down listening with my parents. Um, I'm okay, wait, hold, 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 hold on for a minute. What does dope mean? <laughs> that means... <laughs> is that, that a compliment? Am I being... way, yes, yes, that is a new way to say cool, like awesome, like you just have it all going on, girl. Okay, so I'm dope. Yes, I'm, I'm doping dope. it. I'm doping it, dudes. Okay, <laughs> so go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, honey. Um, yeah, of course. I'm 16, and I'm trying to get my parents to understand that the stigma around vocational school isn't fair, um, and I have really bad anxiety like you do, Miss Stumpo, and it's hard for me to sit through my classes. Um, they're sometimes over an hour. I just get so anxious. Um, I know you just mentioned that a minute ago, um, but I like to work with my hands. It just comes naturally, and I've been thinking about vocational school, and I'm hoping that after listening to you, my parents will be more into it. Um, so I wanted to call and thank you so much for talking about things that, you know, this is the type of thing that not a lot of people talk about, um, and I was just wondering if you had any advice for me or for my parents. You know what? On this one, I'm going to let George take over, and I'm going to okay. George is sitting in the studio, and George is the... Um, Vice President, President, I'm losing it today, um, at Minute Me In, and he can help you with this better than I can. But I will tell you this. I have one question for you. When yeah. you're sitting in that classroom, do you stare at the clock by any chance? Um, yes. 
And Definitely. How, I'm counting down the minutes to get out of class for sure. And isn't it amazing how that hand just doesn't move on that clock? It just sits yes. still. It's like, yes, it's, it's I hard. I absolutely hate it. And have you explained this feeling to your parents? Have you really sat down and explained it? Do they understand it? You know, I've I've tried to talk to them about it. Um, I haven't really had like a a really big conversation. Um, they don't really get it, but that's why we're sitting listening to you. Hopefully, they'll get it a little bit more if you know somebody else. Please, parents. About it. Yes, parents need to listen. We need to listen to our children. We're a new generation. They're a new generation. Let's... George, help her. Yeah. What kind of things do you like to do when uh, if you're not sitting in a classroom? If you if you have the chance to just use your hands, what do you do? Um, I love helping, like, my parents around the house. They do lots of, like, DIY projects, so I'm really good with, like, a drill and a hammer and a screwdriver, just anything, um, putting things together. I take workshop at school, so things like that. Yeah, that's great. I think that's the conversation you just need to have with your, with your parents to start it up and say, you see me, Mom and Dad. You see what I can do. Or maybe, George, you can set up a meeting with her parents and try to help. We can that certainly way. do that, absolutely. That would be great. The office is always open. You know what? This is what I have to say. If, if my kid came to me and had really done their homework on something, your parents have to listen to you. If you're doing your homework right now and you go to them and say, look, I've listened to this, look up Minute Me and, you know, know what you're talking about, sit down with your parents and say, this is why this might be a perfect match for me, mom and dad. But to have your homework, okay. be prepared to be able to answer their questions. Okay. Until cool. Thank you. They look at you and go, "Hold on, you know, maybe we just have to go take a look at this." Yeah, my door is right. absolutely and open, and every time we have kids come in, usually what I do is I spend about ten minutes talking with with you, and we kind of go through all those issues, what makes you tick, and then we bring in mom and dad or whoever you're with, and we talk about it all together so that they can hear it from me. You know, just kind of validating what you said. And sometimes that just opens up a, a different perspective for them. So, George, that was, you know, a great phone call. And this girl needs to reach out. And there are many others out there. Can you please tell the listeners, if they're kids, if they're in high school, if they're in co- whatever, the parents, whatever, how do they reach you? The first place to start is going to our website at minuteman.org. But my telephone number is 781-861-6500, and my direct line is 7225. And you can also reach me by email. That's g.clement at minuteman.org, and I'm happy to talk to anybody who needs help. And we've got more cool kids, cool jobs. When we come back after this short break, I'm Cindy Stumpo, and this is Tough as Nails Radio on WBZ 1030. If you want to ask Cindy a question, post your question on Cindy's Tough as Nails Facebook page. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Stumpo. You're listening to Tough as Nails on WBZ News Radio 1030. And we are talking about cool kids and cool jobs. And I definitely have two of the coolest kids right now in my studio. So, Sammy, what's going on? Okay, so for those of you who who have been listening, we have George, Erica, and Michael here. And we have some callers that are fans and have questions. Doreen, do you happen to be on the line? I am. Oi, let me turn this down. Go ahead, Doreen. Great. Uh, I I thank uh, I thank you for the show. I enjoy listening. And uh, Michael and Erica, thank you for sharing your stories about your experience at Miniman and when Voc Ed. It kind of rings true with my own children. And um, starting the conversation about what choices they'll have with Voc Ed. And uh, my one question is, uh, how hard was it to leave your middle school and some of your friends and make a decision to go to uh, a different type of school? Well, yeah, it was obviously going to be hard leaving everyone you've grown up with since kindergarten, basically, and I was nervous not being able to make all new friends and leaving all of my friends that I had, but I really just kind of looked past that and saw what I really wanted to do and just acted upon that. Cool. 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 Michael, and the same thing. I think we explained it a little earlier, but you can, you know. Yeah, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't that hard. I only had a couple friends in middle school, and they didn't want me to leave, obviously, but I just did. 
because it was for me and I wanted to do it. So I went with it. Great. Great. And uh, my one last question is where do you, where do you see yourself after graduation? After high school graduation? Yes. Yeah. So I want to join the union and become an electrician. And if after co-op, I learned that I don't want to do that. I want to go to a community college and get my associate's degree in business management and education and then go on to a four-year college and get my bachelor's. Pretty pretty sharp girl for 14, 15 years old, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I could have asked my kids that at 15. They would have looked at me like I had five heads. Michael? For now, right after high school, I want to just go straight into the workforce and get my journeyman's license. Yep. If that doesn't work out, I'll probably go to college for bachelor's degree in business management and building construction and i think that's i think that's important because and and, and excuse me doreen for for kicking in on this one but i believe in trade and i believe in education too okay i believe you need both because one day like you said you want to be a general contractor like me you need to know how to run a business and you need to know the fundamentals of that And, and and you know you just can't go out there and open up a business you have to have something, some education on it. And then a lot of it like construction, on-job experience, and using your heart to run your business and taking care of people that work for you, and, and then so on and so on. But that's that's a conversation down the road for you. But you, know, you see, Doreen, we've got two kids here that are 15 years old. and They, they have amazing opportunities and options. Absolutely. Is, is, but the most is important a great part is to have. it seems like they have it together. Yeah. They have focus. That's- they have a direction. We've got kids coming out of college that don't have any idea. They're coming out with $150,000 worth of student loans, but they still don't know what they want to do. I've got no. two 15-year-old kids in my studio. They know what they want to do. So, <laughs> you know, good for them. And I will, trust me, if I'm still alive here 10 years from now, I'll be checking on them. <laughs> but thank you so much for calling in. Thanks, Thank morning. you. Sammy, thank who you. do we have next? We have another caller on the line. His name is Corey. Corey, are you listening? Yeah. <clears throat> Corey, you okay you there? Me? Corey, you okay there, buddy? Hello? Yeah. You sure? Um, want to take it? So. Hold on. You might want to take a sip of water. I'm going to take a sip of mine. You want to take a sip of yours? Okay, let's clear our voices. Are we making you nervous, Corey? Corey, I, I can do that to people. Trust me. It's okay. We're nervous sitting here, too. Yeah. All of us. Very nervous. Okay, Corey, now that we've done, you know, playing with you, what's going on, honey? Appreciate it. So... I would like to talk to you about uh, my son and kind of a, a vague vision that I have for him eventually joining me. Uh, I work in the construction industry, and I kind of see him eventually going down that path okay. uh, with me. Yep, that would be I good. Started, I started college uh, at Bentley, and I eventually decided it didn't make sense. So I left, and, you know, I guess for him, I kind of wonder, is it worth starting college, finishing college, getting a business degree, or right out of high school, looking more at uh, just getting right into it. And, and what kind of high school is he in right now? A traditional high school? Right. He's in a, he's in a traditional high school, but uh, certainly after hearing everything about Minuteman over these last few episodes, uh, we're certainly looking at something like that. And, I, uh, you know, I'm just asking you a question. I know I have had my right. kids on job sites in the summertime, weekends, um, as they were in high school. Do you bring your son out with you? You know, occasionally, uh, but not as much as I should. It's funny. You know, sometimes it's because you're in the business. We have this thing that I do with other builders like, okay, you take my kid and I'll take your kid because your kid's going to listen to me and my kid's going to listen to you. My kid's not going to listen to me and your kid's not going to listen to you. And that that's the first problem. So you can give me your kid anytime and, you know. I've got a 23-year-old, 24-year-old, you want him? Um, but <laughs> it, sometimes it's, you know, if, you, if you've got any buddies in the business near wherever you live or, um, I hate that word. I keep using that word um, about, a lot. But I would bring him out there a little bit more and see if he's got this natural talent that his dad has, you know. Does he have this natural talent? Corey, can I say something from experience that my mom didn't push me to come on board with her and that I chose to come on board on my own? Is that she never made she never made any my brother and I feel like we had to do what she did, that we had to fall on her steps. So make it more of a fun thing for him and see if he actually enjoys it versus something he feels like he's obligated to do just because it's in his family. 
Corey? Understood. How 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 is your son as a student? You know, kind of middle of the road. Uh, could go either way. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm not sure. I'm not sure which uh, which way to go with them. I think if you you know a, a kid like that with your profile would probably do really great in a school like ours because what happens is they're going to get both. They're going to have a high school diploma. They're also going to have some certifications, like both of the kids sitting next to me have an OSHA 10 card already. Um, so they're going to have OSHA the, 10. I love OSHA, that. OSHA 10, yeah. yeah. I'm going, I have an OSHA 20. <laughs> I don't want to sit there for another. Oh, God. Go ahead. But it gives you, it will give them, you know, and we talk a lot with the kids about what do you want to do and what are your options out of high school? Is it college? Is it career? Is it a combination of both? Because there's many roads that lead to the mountaintop, and it's really just helping the kids. So I'm going to fast out. forward this, Curry. Give. Yeah. George, a call. Have a conversation with George, okay? Talk about it. Talk about the issues. You, you know, open up the whole book, a whole can of worms with your son, what you feel his strengths is, his weaknesses are, and talk to George. Because be he, he's he's so easy to talk to, man. He's so cool. He really is. He's a cool guy. Keep me busy, Cindy. <laughs> there you go. I only promote people that I believe in. And when I'm seeing these two kids right now in my studio, they're the epitome of cool kids, really, the epitome of cool kids. Thank you for calling, Corey. Thank you. We have another caller. Lily, are you listening? Yeah, I we... am. I'm here. Hi, Lily. This is Cindy Stumpo. Hi, Cindy. Uh, I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to call to say it's a Oh, great thank God. No questions. Yes, everybody put their shoulders down <laughs> in the studio. No questions. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I just want to let you know you guys have an awesome show. I really hope that... Someday I see you guys all on TV because I love your subjects. I love how you've been talking about these real-life situations. And I wanted to also thank the, the callers um, who are also calling in, participating, and everybody who's uh, coming there from Minuteman. I really appreciate your point of view, so thanks for, thanks for being here. And what do you think about Eric and Michael? I think that they are really ridiculously intelligent teams. They, I, yes, they I are. I think that... They, they know what they want to do. They really have, it seems like, good heads on their shoulders. And, you know, I hope that one day my children are the same. Well, that's an ultimate compliment. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> that's yeah, an ultimate no compliment. So thank you very much for calling in. Yeah, thanks for having me. So George, Erica, and Michael. I can't even like thank you guys enough for coming into the thank studio. You. Thank okay? you. I mean, had a blast. Thank you. And thank you. The callers are great, and and I know time moves really fast in the studio. Even though my shoulders are in my ears, let me just like kind of pull them out of my uh, <laughs> pull them out of my ears. But um, it's just been awesome having you guys here, and I want to bring you back on again because there's so many more questions we're just touching upon to the beginning of the subject. This is Cindy Stampo, and we will be back with these cool kids, Erica and Michael. Okay, Michael, Erica, George, we're going to wrap this segment up. I want three things, Erica, three things that you want to tell my listeners right now that you think is important. Don't think a traditional high school is the only way to go. That's one? Yeah. You want one thing? What three? Oh, I just want one. This one? Okay, <laughs> we'll go with one. Michael, you got one of three things that you okay. like to say. I would say to both parents and students, parents, sit back, relax, and let your kids make their own choices, but make sure they're responsible about it, and kids just keep an open book. Okay, so that's your philosophy. George, anything? And my philosophy would be come check us out for yourself. We have our open house is December 3rd, Sunday, December 3rd from 10 to 1. Uh, everyone will be there. We're all open in all the CTE schools across the state. This is the season to come and check us out. Okay, perfect. So cool kids, cool jobs. They're our future of this country, people. Don't forget that. Parents, please. Know who your kid is, who they are, what they bring to the table. We all want to say, my son the doctor, my daughter the lawyer. Guess what? That's great and wonderful. But i got to be honest, when my parents say, my daughter the general contractor, Cindy Stumpo, it's really cool, okay? And when somebody says, 
my son, the plumber, and he's employing 150 guys in a plumbing house. That's just as cool. And remember something else, parents. Let's stop vicariously living through our children. You've had your time. Whatever you've made of yourself, you've made, and whatever you have fallen down, you have fallen down. Let your kids pick their own path. Be there to guide them. Be there to support them. Do not be there to control them. You must let them live their lives. We're all helicopter moms, but we get to a point, we've got to let them make their own decisions and fall down. This is Cindy Stumpo. Have a great weekend. Tough as nails, WBZ 1030. See you next weekend.